Again, the question is, why are they hyping it? Well, governors and congressmen are saying, as a pretext, to have the whole government shut down during the fall so Obama can pose as the savior and ram through his anti-gun legislation, his open border legislation, his new Bank of the World legislation, handing over our sovereignty, expanding NAFTA and GATT, the North American Union, SPP, uh, his socialized health care agenda. I want to go over some of the new versions of the bill, subsection by subsection, what's really in there. Uh, but I just wanted to mention this, and if I have time near the end of the show, I'm going to play some of these newscasts and get into it. They are now on New York TV, California TV, Texas television, reporting like it's the end of the world with my Joker, my Obama Joker contest. I mean, they are with pinched faces like they're talking about a meteorite approaching the earth that will kill all life on the planet in six months. I mean, they are talking like, like, like the Black Plague has been released. They're, you know, they're talking like the end of the world has happened with grave faces about how scary it is and how frightening it is and how the public is scared and police are investigating and state attorney generals are looking at it in Florida and no one knows what to do. It's so deadly scary. Uh, these people are putting up posters with Infowars.com. Uh, under Obama as the Joker and socialist and fascist. People keep saying, why do you have socialist posters? Why do you have fascist posters? Why do you have New World Order posters? Because socialism, fascism, it's all forms of command and control. Different people, it means different things. Okay, uh, there's different definitions to it. I could spend 10 hours on it if you wanted to. The point is, it's collectivism. And the establishment fooled you with false choices of collectivism. Instead of saying, I want to be a libertarian or I want to be somebody who wants freedom, I want a constitutional republic, they confuse everybody with questions of liberal versus conservative, fascist versus socialist. But, but that isn't the issue. Here is the Washington Post. Flicker versus free speech. Where is their courage? Washington Post. There's a Sydney Morning Herald article talking about censorship in America, not allowed to criticize Obama, defending us. Uh, meanwhile, here's the Hayes County Free Press, freedom of hate speech. And it says Hayes County doesn't have laws against posting these Infowars.com Obama Joker posters, but we need one. And the city council is speeding through a law to ban it, and police are investigating. And then I have... Uh, ABC 12, KBMT News, uh, out of uh, Northeast Texas, out of Tyler, Texas. And, and, and they're reporting on this like, well, I'm going to play it later if I have time. First, I want to take your calls and get into Obama's plunging approval ratings. But, but here's the issue. It says, posters depicting President Obama as the Joker started appearing in Tyler, Texas, Friday, August 22nd. <gasps> the altered picture of the president was made by a college student and has since gone worldwide via YouTube. Up to 20 posters were put on trees, signs, and windows. The only message was the image and the website address, Infowars.com. That's the online site. And it goes, Tyler Police took photos and collected some of the posters as evidence. They're now investigating. So, see, here's the issue. In this free country now, they don't care about... 23.7 trillion stolen by foreign banks. It's hyperventilating over us, but, but people see the censorship as they remove the poster everywhere saying it's hate speech, even online. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? All right, we're going to your calls here in just a moment. I want to throw a program note out. I am consulting for and appearing in some of the TV episodes in October and November and December on True TV. A television program with Jesse Ventura, former Minnesota governor, wrestler, movie star, for those that don't know who he is. And while I was out there in Los Angeles last week taping interviews for that TV show, I got an interesting interview with Jesse Ventura. We're going to be airing that tomorrow on the weekday show, or maybe in two parts, part tomorrow, part on Tuesday. That's coming up. We also have an exclusive behind-the-scenes interview with somebody that a lot of the pollsters and political experts are saying is probably going to end up winning in Kentucky. That's 
Rand Paul, son of Dr. Ron Paul. How exciting is that, ladies and gentlemen? Having a Ron Paul clone, that's what he is. A doppelganger, but a good doppelganger, in the U.S. Senate. We interviewed him when he was in town for a fundraiser Friday. That is going to be coming up during the week as well. So just wanted to get that out there so folks know that's coming up. And I've also got some other big guests coming up during the week. Uh, very, very exciting information on that front. Coming up later in the next hour, I'm also going to read in its entirety, Larry Flint, of all people, has come out against the New World Order and the Democratic Party, saying both parties are controlled and Obama is a New World Order frontman. This is a huge Democratic supporter, huge in Hollywood, always trying to set up Republicans, always trying to catch them, you know, with hookers and things. Uh, he's coming out and saying he understands the left-right paradigm, that it's all controlled now. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. So I'm going to go over that. Because when Larry Flint's kind of a canary in the coal mine, when he becomes nonpartisan, when he finally gets it, and by the way, I've talked to the editor at Hustler. It's from my films, our material. Very exciting. People say, why is your stuff published in Hustler? They ask, we let them. I mean, you know, whatever audience I can get to is the point. And about three years ago, I found they're like, we want to publish your articles in Hustler. And they published three of them in there. So, uh, but the point is, Larry Flint is now completely awake to the New World Order, coming out against Obama. Look out on that front. Uh, so, uh, that said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to get into the, the flu, big new developments there. Obama's approval rating, in case you haven't heard. Rasmussen reports the daily presidential tracking poll for Sunday shows a 27% of the nation's voters strongly approve of the way that Barack Obama is performing his role as president. 41% strongly disapprove, giving Obama a presidential approval index rating of minus 14. These figures mark the lowest approval index rating yet recorded for this president or any previous president. This is, this is just unbelievable. I mean, he was 49 two weeks ago in Rasmussen. Ladies and gentlemen, George Bush had a 39% when he left. I mean, this is, again, this is eight months in. All right, all right. I know I've already said that. It's just, I kept, Trying to explain, though, we've got to expose that he's a New World Order front man when he had power and was strong because he's pulling through their entire agenda of carbon taxing and global government and U.N. treaties and North American Union and anti-gun bills and hate speech bills and government-controlled health care, hijacking 20% of the economy. But he's still dangerous, but now we've got to point out that the other party's controlled as well. And, and, and both parties are going to continue to be unpopular as long as they continue to follow the orders of the special interests that put them in office instead of what the people want and what the Bill of Rights and Constitution states. So this isn't over. They'll just put a new puppet in, and people will find out they're bad. And then another puppet, another puppet. And that's why this country is going into revolution, because people are finally getting it. No matter who they put in, I mean, previously it took years for people to find out a president was scamming them. Now they find out in six, seven, eight months. The jig is up, folks, in the information age. All right, let's go to calls here. I'm going to go to your calls quickly and try to get to the next person. So please have your point ready. Uh, Wyatt in Maryland. You're on the air, Wyatt. Hey, don't know. It's Smith there. Thanks for taking my call. Wait a minute. Uh, I, I haven't heard from you in probably five years. This is the guy that shot the Marines training to confiscate the guns and take over Hebron, Maryland. That's in Police State 2000, Wyatt. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's been a while. I listen to you all the time, but I just haven't had a chance to call. I work a lot, and I'm on the road a lot. Uh, in fact, I'm on the road now. Um, since uh, Congress has been on uh, recess, their, their vacation, their, uh, uh, one of many, um, C-SPAN radio, which I was doing in, in my car, in my van, um, is constantly playing uh, flu, uh, flu vaccine programming. It's either from Health and Human Services or Center for Disease Control or General Palatano from Homeland Security. They're constantly on. They have this thing uh, to put down to a science, what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. And so and they're, and they're all talking about epidemic, epidemic, pandemic, epidemic, pandemic. They've got this thing planned. Uh, this is no secret for them. They're, they're, and and, and uh, Lapalatano was on the other week, and they replayed it, and what she said is, I'm talking about, uh, well, we need the parents to take control of everything, make sure that they, they watch their children, blah, blah, blah. 
And then he says, and we're working along with the, with the Department of Defense. And you know what that means? That's, that, that, that's, that's uh, code for military. Well, Wyatt, 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 there's no code. Wyatt, there's no code about it. The Pentagon right. has gone to Congress and said, we want funding additional for 400,000 regular Army and Marines to patrol America to fight terrorism. I mean, this is Associated Press, The Hill. This is all mainstream news. And, yes, that's the point. For listeners and, and new listeners that don't study how government works, we said in January that they were building mass graves, getting ready for martial law, training local emergency managers and police that this was coming in the fall. Ten months later, I went on air, did show after show. Then we correctly said, and, and I'm not tooting our horn, I'm saying, because it's obvious, it's out in the open, uh, April was just the fear-mongering, the priming, the non-event, two or three dead Americans.